delicious French fruit tart. A French fruit tart? I have very little experience with any type of pastry, and especially one that looks like that. The secret to this beautiful dessert is finding the perfect balance between several stunning components. First, the buttery pastry, which must be baked to a crisp and flaky golden brown. Secondly, a silky smooth layer of vanilla bean pastry cream, stirred to the perfect consistency. And to top it all off, a stunning arrangement of fresh fruit, all coated in a deliciously light apple glaze. The slightest misstep could end your MasterChef Canada journey. Please come up and have a taste. I'm from New Brunswick. I've never seen a French fruit tart at any of the bakeries that I go to. This is way out of my expertise. This is going to be hard. This is going to be really difficult to replicate. I'm not really as strong with dessert as I am with savory stuff, but you know what? I'm going to bring it. I'm going to make a perfect pastry. It's going to be art in a tart. Good luck, and please go to your stations. This is not going to be an easy challenge. Seeing that so many strong home cooks are down there, it's going to be a dogfight. At your stations, you'll find everything you need to replicate this delicious French dessert, and 45 minutes to do it in. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now. I'm so nervous right now, and I'm not even cooking. This is on. I don't do pastry. I don't do pastry at all. I'm going to need a miracle today. Luckily, I believe in miracles. Making perfect pastry under a 45-minute time clock is never, ever easy. This is the first time two cooks are going home in a pressure test. You can cut the tension here with a knife. The pressure is huge. You know, this is a replication challenge. There are three major components to making this French fruit tart. The pastry, the pastry cream, and fruit. Today has to be a shining moment for me. Strategy here is to not make any mistakes. It's got to be perfect. Refined pastry crust is key. You've got to delicately work the pastry. They have to cook that pastry to perfection. If it's too thin, it'll break. If it's too thick, it'll be raw in the middle. The pastry cream, you have to whip up your egg yolks with the sugar, scald your milk and cream, and slowly cook it out. Then you can flavor it with your vanilla. You can't improvise with pastry. You either do it well, or it's a disaster. There's nowhere to hide. I don't know. Worried about David here? Dough is sticking. I'm looking at a mess. I keep on trying to pull it off. It's not working. This is horrible. I'm starting again. You gotta make it beautiful. It's gotta taste good. It's gotta look good. A lot of things to go wrong. John, how you feeling? Hey, chef. Feeling great, chef. I'm used to working under pressure. I love it. Who do you think's going home? Probably Andrew's going home. His nerves are getting to him. Who's the other one? I don't know. So it's not gonna be you, eh? Oh, no, it's definitely not. <laughs> I'm not going home. Well, I'll leave you to it. Good luck. Andrew. Hello, Chef. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling super confident, but you know what? I'm not going out with a fight, so. A lot of your fellow home cooks after the team challenge seem very frustrated with you. Yeah. I, I feel guilty about that. So who do you think's going home? I think it's a possibility John might go home today. John, really? Yeah. I don't think he's going to pull it out? I haven't looked back. I'm running my own race right now, Chef. It's not my concern what he's doing. I just want to be better. All right, we'll keep your eye on the clock. Thank you, Chef. All right, good luck. Thank you. Final two minutes. This is really freaking intense, man. Feel me now, Hans. You're going home today. Oh, John is the first one to actually start glazing. You glaze the top of the fruit. It's got to be clean sheen. So it looks like glass. Good. 30 seconds! This is cutting it really close. Cody's not going to make it. I'm looking over at the other people's. And I'm going, I got this. It's 
time to taste your French fruit tarts. David, the first thing that I notice is how high the fruit sits. It's as if the fruit just wants to sort of jump out. It looks great. Let's see how it cuts. Looks like some real craftsmanship there, David. Thank you. Thin crust, and to get the pastry that even all the way. It's a little finesse. Let's see how it tastes. A nice crispness to the pastry. The pastry cream could have been just a tad softer. The fruit, if you're gonna cut thick, have them all thick. That's the consistency, and yours has that consistency. All in all, quite impressive. Thank you, Chef. Andrew! Yes, Chef. How do you feel about this? <laughs> I'm actually kind of proud. Uh, this is something that is so foreign to me. You know, this is a mighty fine looking tart, considering you've done it in 45 minutes. I think it's a very good effort. I mean, it looks good. It looks very good. You have very nicely precise cut on your fruit. I try to get everything as uniform as possible. The crust is crispy, thin, it's even. But the, the pastry cream, unfortunately, it's a bit bland. I can't taste the vanilla at all. It lacks a little taste. Not so good. Lynn, how are you? Good, how are you, chef? Oh, look how exact that is. It's beautiful. Did not skimp on the pastry cream, did you? No, sir, because it tastes yummy. any faults in this tart. Thank you, Chef. You just keep getting better, Lynn. Thank the you. The crust is, I mean, it's like, it's like a machine did it. The cream is light, thin crust, and again, 45 minutes. I've never made one of these before, ever, so I'm actually surprising myself every day that I'm here. Keep doing that, and you might land the biggest surprise. Thank you, Chef. A silky smooth milk chocolate mousse with the fresh passion fruit center. You have to make it correctly for this beautiful filling to flow out. These are our favorite chocolate desserts and you will be making all three of them. Lynn, you look a bit stunned. To make three all at the same time, that's almost mission impossible. Sabrina, how do you feel about making three desserts today? Call me crazy, but I'm excited. <laughs> Should be interesting. Sabrina is such a tough competitor because she's like a pit bull. She just doesn't give up. Please come up and have a taste of what it is that we expect from you. I'm a little bit scared because Lynn has done a lot of replication challenges and nailed them. It has to be done a certain way. It's very regimented just like the military. Please go to your stations. Lucky guys. I'm really happy I'm up in the gallery. They have to make three desserts. This is crazy. You will have just 90 minutes. So use your time well. This is the cat fight that will end all cat fights. This is a fight to the finale. Lynn's not taking my place in the finale, not now. Game on, girlfriend. Are you ready? Yes, yes, chef. Your time starts now. But this is a very difficult challenge. We're talking about three different, very intricate chocolate desserts. <sighs> Definitely toughest challenge in MasterChef Canada history. I think professional pastry chefs would struggle. I want that chef coat really bad. I want to go head to head with David in the finals. Lynn is certainly a very strong contender in this competition. She scares me. Her speed, I've never seen anybody that fast. I came here to be in the finale. This has to turn out perfect. 
first thing I do, I get my brownies going. Those things have to bake and cool down fast. Both of them are doing the brownie first. I am expecting that chocolate brownie to be soft, moist, and mouth-watering. My brownie is coming out really well. It's nice and dense. It's also cutting really clean edges. That looks about right. Two minutes! You have two minutes left! That doesn't work. You know, desserts need to look absolutely beautiful. One shake of the hand, one misstep with piping out that chocolate, and you've got to start that plate again. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, heads up! At this point, I'm thinking I got this. Sabrina's good at plating. Lynn is good at taste. If this goes to the person that makes the prettiest plate, Sabrina's gonna win it. Now, we will taste all your chocolate desserts, and this will determine which one of you will advance to the finale. Sabrina. Chef. What was the hardest about the creme brulee? The burnt sugar without taking it too burnt and making sure it's the right thickness. The most important thing is that tap. And if you hear that crack of the shell, then the sugar is done right, OK? If it doesn't crack, it's too thick. Here, so let's crack. Let's dig into this. That's very nice. It looks velvety smooth. It looks, OK? The egg and the cream, perfect. It's smooth, it's velvety. As I bite into that burnt sugar, it was not even. Parts that were thick, and there was parts that were not so thick. But overall, good job. Great job. Lynn! It looks pretty perfect to me. I like that crack because it's kind of like thin ice. Sugar coat felt very, very even, and that's what I was looking for. Inside, you have a nice combination, nice mixture of the white chocolate with the egg mix. That is close to perfection. Great dish. Thank you, chef. Well, certainly at first glance, it looks like a very, very good replication. The cut on your chocolate brownie looks very precise and clean. Let's try it. The ice cream, I think, is wonderful. Beautiful consistency, has that hint of vanilla. The brownie, I get that dark chocolate richness. I just find this a touch on the dense side, and I, I, it, I'm concerned that it may have needed just a little bit more moisture. But a very, very good replication. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Lynn, how are you feeling? I'm very proud of myself right now. At first glance, I do think your cutting of the chocolate brownie is uh, less precise, a little ragged around the edge there. And that was the easiest aspect of this dish to pull off. But in the words of my esteemed colleague, taste is king. That ice cream is spot on. The chocolate brownie, delicious, soft, moist. All in all, a very good brownie. Thank you, Chef. This is not going to be easy. Thank you. Me and Lynn are both strong players. We're neck and neck. And now we're down to the final dessert. I have to say, this looks very elegant. You think you achieved the liquid center that we're looking for? Yeah, Chef. Well, let's see what happens. That is a sight of beauty. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Fantastic. Thank you, Chef. The splash on the top, Lynn, looks a little messy. Yes, Chef. If the center of this dome does not have that liquid passion fruit, 
it's not going to be good for you. To be honest, I don't know what the inside is going to look like. <laughs> See how it tastes. You did it. You've just made our job a lot more difficult in picking who will be in the finale. I'm worried about this. She's got to get here fast, so that's going to burn. Are you concerned about this at all? No, no? this is actually okay. doing exactly what I wanted to okay, do. Okay, good. You had me worried for a second. <laughs> this is uh, just cream with a bit of sugar and salt, and I'm cooking the heck out of it. It's a brown butter crumb to go under my ice cream. It's really tasty, hmm. trust me. How close do you think this competition is right now? Super close. Super close. Like super close. And I am feeling it. I'm going to let you focus on your dessert. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Plating. The whole competition is riding on this dessert. Look what Jeremy's doing. He's layering flavor after flavor after flavor. That's going to be exciting to eat. Running to get the ice cream. The galleries are looking in amazement right now. They must be really jealous because we get to eat this and they don't. I am so happy with my final dish. This dessert is beautiful, and it's exactly how I wanted it to look. I've never plated a dessert this beautiful before. This dessert shows how far I've come. Jeremy, please bring up your dishes. Milk tea panna cotta. On top is a coconut tapioca topped with fried plantains with a jackfruit ice cream. Well, Jeremy, I think you've created something that is completely and utterly original. So let's dig in. You know, Jeremy, all that different textures coming together, you know, to me, that is genius. This is not at all too sweet, too sour. It's very difficult to bake panna cotta with milk tea because it has to be very, very strong. And of course, being at the bottom of the dessert, so you're gonna hit that last. Now, that, I guess you could have made that slightly stronger, heavier on the teeth, but I just want to take spoonful and spoonful. I love it. Thank you, chef. When I watched you prepare it and I heard you describe it, I didn't understand it. I don't like this at all. I love it. Thank you. Speaks to me in so many different levels. Texturally, it's incredibly advanced. The flavors just keep changing and morphing. The top layer has that beautiful tapioca, which I love. And then when you think you figured it out, you dig a little deeper and you find this beautiful tea and milk panna cotta. I've never had anything like it. You took all the flavors that your mom introduced to you and you've just created a new dessert. Incredible. Thank you, chef. It is so light and so unique and interesting. The tapioca pearls have a wonderful mouthfeel. You sort of want them to dance around on your palate as you taste that little bit of coconut. You then have that refreshing citrus layer that is so bright and clean, yet still light. This is a great dessert. Thank you, chef. Mary, please bring your dessert up. I made a blueberry financier with some brown butter crumb, some kettle corn for the plate, a blueberry sauce for the bottom, and a buttermilk corn ice cream. All right, let's taste. You know, Mary, 
the sophistication, you know, really appeals to the professional side of me. But that popcorn, you know, I want to dive in like a kid. <laughs> All the flavors, they all come together. I can taste the corn, I can taste the maple syrup, the crunchiness, the different textures. So everything in this plate works. Thank you so much, Chef. Mary, this is truly a lovely little dessert. The actual cake itself has a sort of a humble quality to it, but with your presentation, you've been able to elevate it. The Panencia cake has a little bit of a lemony touch to it. It has a little bit of that cornmeal, which adds a nice little texture crunch to it. Beautiful blueberries in there. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Everything works so well together. The corn ice cream is incredibly intense. I like the way you reinforced the theme of the corn ice cream with popcorn. It feels like a road trip. Going up to your cottage, stopping off, picking up some blueberries, grabbing some corn. Amazing. In fact, I'd love to have it on my menu at my restaurant. I think it's playful, it's intelligent. It's all those things you want in a dessert. Thank you so much. You both prepared absolutely stunning three-course meals, and you've made choosing a winner a near-on impossible task. But tonight, one of you will become Canada's next master chef. And we need to decide who that's going to be. So please head back to the kitchen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, chefs. Thank you. Stone fruits. I see peaches, plums, and I think, am I going to have to bake? This is good for me because I would love to bake. Now, if any of you have visions of desserts dancing through your head, you might just have to think again. Because Trevor's next advantage is that he gets to decide what type of dish you'll be making, savory or sweet. You'll be making your decisions with these. If you hand a home cook a sugar bowl, that means they need to make a sweet dessert and if you hand them a salt shaker, they have to make a savory dish using stone fruits. Everybody's fate is in my hands. I'm gonna make it count. Okay, Trevor, it's time to hand these out. Thank you, chef. Please do not give me sugar. Hey, Cam. Thanks for not doing me dirty, bro. Hey, Jordan. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> if Trevor gives me a bowl of sugar, I'm gonna throw it back in his face. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Taya. Hi, Trevor. Let's see what you can do with the sugar. I'm not happy at all. You just made my day. I guess I chose wrong then. You did. Hey, Alicia. Hey. Two options left. I'm not sure what to do. Please, Trevor, save some sugar for me. I'm going to go with sweet. <sighs> hey, Alice. I guess there's only one option left. Salt. Now that you've wrapped your heads around this challenge, there is one final twist. Trevor has another advantage he doesn't even know about. Trevor has way too many advantages right now. He gets to save roughly half of you from cooking. Oh <laughs> Either all of the men or all of the women. Oh my god. That's ridiculous. Jeez. I don't know what Trevor's gonna do, but I know he has a soft spot for the ladies. <laughs> Trevor, who's it gonna be? The man or the woman? I hope that Trevor saves me. After all, I shared my oven with him. Chef, I'm gonna decide to save the men in this challenge. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. At this point, the strongest competitors in this competition are women and I'd like to see him duke it out head to head. I don't believe that. <laughs> he just wanted his bros to go up with him. It's bro town all the way. We'll just rock it out in the kitchen without you. Okay, home cooks, you now have 60 minutes to transform your stone fruit into a sweet or savory dish. At the end of this challenge, at least one of you will be going home. Your 60 minutes starts now. Come on, Kim, you got Come this. on, guys. Let's go, Alicia, let's go, Kim, come on. Go, 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 go. Only oxtail. Sweet spices, spices, spices. I'm excited to have the salt shaker. I feel very comfortable working with savory food. Duck, no, I don't want duck legs, maybe a lamb. 
This is so heavy. I, I need eggs. I like to eat baking, but I just suck at it. Oh, my dear Lord, this is just ridiculous. I'm just not a baker. I'm just not a baker. I love stone fruit. If I could, I could eat some right now. <laughs> Trevor chose the man. Uh, he's a boy boy. He likes his men. <laughs> Enjoy the rest because uh, I'll take over. <laughs> Sweet is my forte. I am making peach gazpacho, sweet cheese ravioli, and some bacon marmalade. I love to play those sweet, salty flavors. This is a workout, man. Which would be more difficult, making sweet or savory? I think when you think of stone fruit, peaches, plums, automatically you think sweet. For me, savory, of course. Duck, plums, perfect match. I think as a chef, though, you need to be able to do both really well. Whew. My man Trevor there gave me the salt. I'm excited. I want the judges to see that I am more than just a baker. 15 minutes! You have 15 minutes left! 15 minutes! Okay, that's done. Look, guys, I made a cake! Nice yeah. job, Taya. Way to go, Taya. I am so proud of my cake. It is cooked perfectly. It's good, guys! It's good! <laughs> I turned you into a baker. <laughs> May still hasn't started cooking our lamp. I'm looking at the clock and I'm running really low on time. I really need to get my lamp on. I see May has just put her lamb into the pan. I'm concerned that she's not going to get that cooked in time. May, you have seven minutes. May's in the weeds now. I am so mad at myself right now. I wish I had started on my lamb a lot earlier. My fruit could have waited. Go oh, in. Five minutes. You have five minutes left. You need to pop it back in. You better be thinking about beautiful plating. I can do this. I can do this, guys. If this fish is not done correctly, I'm going home. Looks like Miranda's bison has a nice cook on it. Yeah. But she needs to start plating. Look, May has just taken her lamb out of the oven. She hasn't let it relax, and now it is being cut. Oh my. It's completely raw. Ah. I'm so desperate to get this lamb cooked and start searing it on the pan. I don't think May's gonna make it. May is not gonna make it. Cardio. Didn't I just say that? One minute! You have one minute left. Start plating now. Hot, hot, hot. No, my peaches are too hot. It's just gonna melt. You got this, girls. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one, heads up! Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. I made a cake. It just doesn't look pretty. Such a great job, everyone. Now it's time to find out just how successful you were. Miranda, would you please bring your dish to the front? I'm just hoping that they see that I can put savory flavors together. I made a seared bison ribeye steak with a plum cherry port sauce on top of a tomato plum gratin. Miranda, you've kept the bison medium to medium red, eh? Yes. Nice. Delicious flavors. The freshness of the fruit, the tomatoes, the peach, the cherries, they work really, really well together. It makes the bison shine. It is tender, it is nicely cooked, and I think the seasoning is close to spot on. Thank you, chef. Nice job, Miranda. Today I proved that sweet or savory, watch your back, because I'm here to stay. Alice, please bring up your dish. I'm hoping that the peaches are the star of the dish. I have here a lemon herbal cod with a peach ratatouille and some scallop peaches and a cauliflower puree. What's going on with you? I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. Is there oregano in that? Just a little bit of it. A lot of oregano. That's pretty intense. What's the seasoning on the fish? I've got some fennel, margarine, thyme. Fennel, margarine, thyme. 
Oregano. There's a lot going on here, Alice. You know, the fish is perfectly cooked, but you went overboard here with all of these ingredients on one plate, and I hope it doesn't cost you. Alice. Look, I have to be honest with you. I wanted to taste that beautiful, ripe, slightly sweet peach. It gets lost with the big herb flavor, the cauliflower puree. I think it's misplaced. I think you overthought this. It's a little bit too much of everything. <sighs> Alicia, would you please bring your dish up to the front for tasting? I think for somebody who doesn't usually bake, I did a pretty damn good job. So here I have a peach and nectarine crumble with a dark rum cream and caramelized pecans and walnuts. You know something? I bite into that, the crumble was crispy. It was like underneath that, the fruits come together, they bind. And the best thing about this, it's not too sweet. But just like me, sweet enough. Thank you, Chef. Good job, Alicia. Me, would you please bring your dish to the front? This plate does not represent fully what I can do in the kitchen. I feel so disappointed in myself. I did a lamb marinated in garlic, thyme, and dill, a plum gastrique, and a celery root puree. The overall plate presentation, I think, looks terrific. Let's see how that lamb looks, the moment of truth. In my gut, I know this lamb is not cooked enough. I feel like I want to turn around and run out of this kitchen. Is that what you'd expect of me? Um, I would like it to be a little less pink. I would have to agree with you. Let's have a taste. Taste-wise, it's great. Well seasoned. And the bright flavors on the gastrique emphasizes the plum. This has come down to time management on your behalf. I think so, too. It was a mistake, but was it a tragic flaw? I really don't know. A great big wheel of tropical fruits. Interesting. I feel like this wheel is awfully colorful for an elimination challenge. This wheel is full of delicious and versatile fruit, some of which will be new to you. But whether you know it or not, you'll have to find a way to make a spectacular dish. And each one of you will have a chance to come up here and spin the wheel. What you land on is what you cook with. The color of the slice you land on also tells you the kind of dish you have to make. Oh, my gosh. If you land on a yellow segment, you'll have to create a sweet dish. Okay. If you land on turquoise, you need to cook something savory. Andre. I'm sure you're hoping you'll be safe from elimination. I hope so. Well, not today. But you do have an advantage. You get your pick of any fruit on the wheel. Oh. <laughs> so, Andre, which fruit would you like to cook with? Almost half of the fruits on this wheel are grown in Jamaica, and I've eaten a ton of them, but I've never, ever used them in a dish. This fruit grew in my backyard in Jamaica, and that's passion fruit. Which do you choose, sweet or savory? I'm gonna choose a savory dish. Chrissy, come on up and spin. In Thunder Bay, we have pretty limited access to tropical and exotic fruits, so I'm actually feeling really nervous. Sugar apple, a sweet dish. I've never cooked with sugar apple, and this is an elimination challenge. <gasps> tamarind, a savory dish. Oh, oh dear God. The tamarind I definitely don't want to cook with because I have no idea what it tastes like or how to use it. 
Sour saw. Sweet. Yay! I really have no idea why I'm excited about the sour saw. I've never even cut into one. Coconut. Savory. I feel good about this. Coconut's pretty versatile, but savory with coconut is definitely more of a challenge for me. Okay, everyone, the wheel has decided your fate. You will have 60 minutes for this challenge, and you'll have access to a full pantry with all the ingredients you'll need for an irresistible sweet or savory dish. And remember, at the end of this challenge, at least one of you will be going home. So don't let us down. Your 60 minutes starts now. Open <laughs> <laughs> the door. Oh, hey -o. Where are my passion fruits? All oh, there. I'm taking this whole damn thing. Do you have corn tortillas in here somewhere? Saigon. I'm just trying to grab literally everything that goes with coconut. What did I get again? Sour sop. I literally could grab a million of these. I've never cooked with sour sop. I've never seen a sour sop in a grocery store. I've never cut into a sour sop. So I'm literally grabbing everything I can that I think would go with sour sop. What am I gonna do with this thing? What else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? I got a big bowl of lobster. <laughs> All right, holy crap. All right. It's difficult to work with tropical fruit like this because it's all about finding that right balance and it's not overpowering or underusing those interesting, wonderful flavors. They're gonna have to taste their way through this challenge and really understand what the flavor profiles are of these tropical fruits in order to completely decode them and figure them out. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Some of these tropical fruit, they are not easy to use, such as sour sap and sugar apple. They have tons and tons of seeds. The first thing you gotta do is remove those seeds to harvest the flesh. Oh God, this is gonna take me forever. There we go. So I chose the passion fruit. I know passion fruit and I understand the flavors of it. So I'm pretty confident. I would love to work with passion fruit. I love the sourness, the sweetness, all those different flavors coming together. But you have to be careful because it's very, very acidic, so it could be overpowering. So today I am making a scallop fritter with some seared scallop and sweet and spicy passion fruit glaze and a nice passion fruit uh, vinaigrette to go with the salad. My auntie Joan gave me a nice jolt of motivation, so I gotta stay in here as long as I can for her. Okay, lots of passion fruit in here. Five minutes, you only have five minutes left. All right. I don't know what I'm doing here. Right? I'm like multitasking to the max. It's a bigger pan than I thought. Looks like Chanel is having some trouble with those crepes. I'm not sure she has enough time to start again, though. Two minutes, you only have two more minutes left. Show us what you can do with tropical fruit. All right, guys, okay, I don't want this to look. Oh, man. Final 30 seconds, come on! Oh, okay. Oh, my God, she is cutting up close. Oh, man. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, hands up. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Right now, this is the most important dish so far in this competition, because you're only as good as your last cook. So I'm hoping I've done enough for sure. I'm feeling really happy that things worked out as I hoped they would, and I hope it continues that way <laughs> for the tasting. Andre, come on up. I'm nervous about the past fruit. I just hope the balance of flavors are there. I made a scallop fritter glazed with passion fruit and chilies and a fresh salad with passion fruit vinaigrette. Well, I see color, I see refinement, and when I cut into it, I'm expecting to get something airy with a lot of flavor. I'm getting exactly all of that. Oh, it's crispy on the outside, fluffy and tasty on the inside. The passion fruit has such a big punch of flavor. This is restaurant quality. Thank you very much.
Really delicious. I love that passion fruit that comes out. You really understand how all these flavors play with each other. It's very sophisticated. It's one of the best dishes we've seen this season. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I feel really great. I put all my creativity into this one plate. Chanel, you're up next. I was assigned the soursop, so I did soursop filled crepes with three different toppings, mascarpone, limoncello, macadamia nut, roasted jackfruit and silvered almond, and smoked candied apple. To be honest, I'm disappointed with the way this looks. It looks clumsy and not refined at all. The crepe, it's a bit thick. You should have added a little more milk to it and just let it out a little bit, and that would have resolved that issue. Mm. Hmm. I can't taste the soursop. You gotta be careful that you don't overpower it with stronger flavors. You know, Chanel, I hope that you have the opportunity to show us more, because I know you have what it takes. Thank you, Chef. Jennifer, please bring your dish to the front. I got coconut, and I made crustacean on papillote with lobster tail, rum poached dates, and coconut curry sauce. Cooking on papillote requires perfect timing. You have no idea how the cook is on your crustacea. Top five, elimination challenge, and you decide to pull this out of your box of tricks. You think you're pushing your luck? When you put it that way, chef, I feel a lot more nervous than I did when I first walked out. So I'm gonna cut it open and see how things look. <sighs> Aesthetically, this is what I would be looking for. Okay. Now, the ultimate test is how did everything cook? Unfortunately, the lobster has suffered from overcooking. Okay. Maybe an additional bit of moisture, such as white wine or something in there, just to help keep things extra moist. Because when you cook on papillot, it's tough to see how it's doing. Right. Overall, you use the coconut in a very elegant way. But I think you know where you misstepped on this dish. Okay, chef. I would be incredibly sad to go home on something that was not my very best. Chrissy, please bring up your dish. I got the sugar apple. I have done a sugar apple tart. So there's a sugar apple puree on the bottom. And then on top, I've caramelized some sugar apple and a creme anglaise on the side with a hint of cinnamon. So I am impressed with the presentation. Thank you, Chef. I love these little pearls because it gives it a little bit of sophistication. But even beautiful tarts could be on the bottom. I'm hoping it's cooked through. <laughs> Let's have a look. I can see that it looks good. It could have done a teeny bit more time to get more caramelization. Wow. You definitely taste the sugar apple. It's creamy, it's smooth, delicate, and mildly sweet. You're very wise to keep the other elements to a minimum. Christy, you can bake. Thank you so much, Chef. Well done.